assalam alaikum students today we are going to learn about definite integrals we already discussed in our previous video lectures what is integ integration why we need integration real life examples of the integrations and properties and rules of the indefinite integrals with the help of examples we also learn about the integration by parts and integration by using partial fraction and details about the partial fraction what is fraction why we need partial fraction and its real life example etc for the details of all these listed topics you should check the description box links are given there first of all we should know that what is integration or introduction introduction related to integration the relationship involves the rate of change of two variables but also need to know the direct relationship between the two variables for example we will know the velocity of an object at a particular time basically velocity is the rate of change of the displacement with respect to the time and by using the derivatives we can find this rate of change with respect to the time of the displacement but if we want to know the position of the object at that time if to find this direct relationship we need to use the process which is opposite to the differentiation this is called integration or anti differentiation this process of integration as used in many other applications of real life differentiation and integration comparison the most of the mathematical operations have inverse operations the inverse operation of the addition is subtraction the inverse operation of multiplication is division the inverse operation of differentiation is called integration notation relationship between the differentiation and integration is given here the differentiation is a rate of change of the dependent variable with respect to the independent variable here y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable the integral of y in de dependent variable with respect to dx which is the differential of the independent variable dramatical interpretation of the derivatives and the integration is given here the derivatives uh, is the rate of change of a function f of x where x is the independent variable at some particular point x is equal to a this gives us the slope of the function f of x by red line we can see that the slope of the function f of x at some particular point x is equal to a but the integral of the function f of x over the range x is equal to b to x is equal to c gives us the area under the curve between these two points b and c okay integral gives us the area under the curve between some specific points definite integral and derivative gives us the slope of the function at some particular point now we discuss the layout of our two day lecture the definition of the definite integral notation and terminology is used in the definite integrals fundamental theorem of the calculus to use the definite integral on to evaluate definite integral additive properties of the definite integrals and comparison properties of the definite integrals first of all the definition of the definite integral the definite integral has start and end values in other words there is an interval or a close interval a b b a and b are called the bounds or boundaries of the integral are put at the bottom and top of the integral sign from this pictorial representation we can see that in the case of definite integral there is no specific value but in case of the definite integral there are some specific values a and b in f under which we have to find the area of this curve f of x between a and b notation of the definite integral the integral sign this sign is called integral sign and the function this is called the integrand and around which we have to take the differentiation dx is called the differential next the limits a and a and b are the lower and the upper limits are uh, this b is as upper limit and a act as a lower limit here a is as a lower limit these two limits are used the process of computing the integral is called integration 
computing definite integrals fundamental theorem of the calculus the statement of the fundamental theorem of the calculus is given here suppose small f of x is a continuous function on a closed interval a b and also suppose that capital f of x is any antiderivative of small f of x then integral from a to b of small f of x dx is equal to capital f of b f of x is basically the antiderivative this f of x is the antiderivative of small f of x then by taking its integration we get our answer f of x then we have to put the limit first of all upper limit b f of b minus lower limit f of a where a is the lower limit properties of the definite integral let f and g be two integrable function on a closed interval a b and c are constant then if we are going to take the integration of this constant value with respect to dx where x is the independent variable and a and b be the lower and upper limit of the definite integral as we know that by, by integration of 1 is x then we by using the fundamental theorem of the calculus we have the value c into b minus x by by putting in place of x upper limit minus lower limit next property if two functions f of x and g of x add up in the definite integral then we can separate this definite integral with these two functions the un the result will be same if we sum these two functions and then take in their definite integrations and if we separately take their definite integral and then add them add these two terms we again get the same answer if a constant c is multiplied with the function f of x then we can write this expression both of them gives us the same value if a constant multiply with the function and then we take the integration or either if we take the integration then multiply with this constant we get the same values we can use this property of the definite integral here if the difference of the two functions and then their integration or either we take their uh, in separately definite integral and subtract them we have the same values more properties of the definite integral these properties are very important if we have uh, we can see that in this integral the lower limit is b and the upper limit is a if we interchange these limits what will be what will be the effect by interchanging these limits if we be change a as a lower limit in this integral and b becomes as a upper limit in this integral then there appears a negative sign with it it means we can change these limits but a negative sign appear with it next if the upper or lower limit of an integral is same upper limit is a and lower limit is also a then this will be its answer will be zero as by using the fundamental theorem of the calculus capital f of a minus f of a gives us the zero value if the capital f of a is the antiderivative of the small f of a this property 5 is very important if we have a limit from a to c from a to c and if we take b be any point between a and c where b is greater than a and less or equal to c greater or equal to a and less or equal to c then this property hold if we take the integration from a to b and then from b to c we get the same value either we take the integration from direct from a to c or we break at some point b between them we get the same value for its better understanding first of all we draw a graph for this function f of x this curve represent a graph of the function f of x next the area bounded by this indefinite integral from point a to this a point from point a to point b is given here 
this definite integral gives us the value in the shaded region or in the yellow region shaded under this curve f of x now next value is now we are going to take the integral by using the limit b from b to c from b to c the area bounded by this region gives us the value of this integral sign from b to c f of x here we can see that by taking their sum we get the value from a to c the whole value from a to c we are going to take the integral of this f of x from a to c these two are the equal comparison properties of the definite integral let f and g be integrable function on a closed interval a b and f of x and f of x is greater or equal to 0 that is the value of f of x is non negative for all x belongs to the closed interval a b then its integral value is also non negative for all x belongs to the interval a b from here we limits a and b if we take the integral by taking the same limits in which the function is non-negative for all values of x belongs to the a b then its integral value is also non-negative or gives us the positive value if f of x is greater than g of x for all x belongs to the closed interval a b then the integral value of the f of x is also greater or equal to the integral value of g of x in this closed interval from a to b here limits are a to b okay next thing is computing area by using definite integral now we consider an example find the area between the curve y is equal to x cube and the x and the x is x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1 the limits of the integral is x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1 here actually we have to find this integral value of the this integral we find the value of the this integral by using the fundamental theorem of the calculus and here the rule uh, we use the power rule as power rule is if the function f of x whose power is n and without its power its derivative is multiplied with this term f of x f dash of x is the derivative of f of x then we can apply a power rule and this power rule gives us the value we can add one uh, one to the power n and also divide n plus one in this term here we are taking taking the integral of x cube without power x derivatives of the x is one then after applying the uh, power rule we get the value of x four over four and limits are zero and one now we're using the fundamental theorem of the calculus we put the upper limit minus lower limit upper limit is 1 1 by 4 minus 0 by 4 gives us the value of 1 by 4 we can also see this from this graph for limits from 0 to 1 and the shaded region gives us the area under this curve x cube it seems to forget we why we not choose plus c in this the case of the definite integral its explanation is here a complete steps for the integration is given here as we put the upper limit 1 by 4 minus the lower limit we get the value of 1 by 4 in other words if we put the value plus c with it what will be the response first of all we have to put in the whole function the upper limit upper limit is 1 in place of the x and the lower limit of x is 0 then we put 0 plus c 1 over we get the value 1 by 4 plus c minus c and plus c minus c is equal to 0 again we get the same answer as in the case then 1 by 4 it means no matter what the value of the c in the case of the definite integral so in anti-differentiation for definite integral the constant is immaterial we are not going to use the constant plus c in case of the definite integral next example we have to take the integration 
of 1 by x limits from 1 to 2. Here we again use the fundamental theorem, the calculus and the uh, rule used here. If a function appears in the denominator and its derivative is in numerator, then we its integral gives us the log of the denominator that is f of x. Here the function is x and its derivative in the numerator is 1. Then 1 over x is equal to log of x. Now we have to put the limits by using the fundamental theorem of the calculus. Upper First of all we put upper limit and then lower limit. Upper limit is 2 and the lower limit is 1. It means log of 2 minus log of 1 is equal to log of 2. How we get this log of 2? As we note the properties of the initial logarithmic if lo, uh, log of 2 minus log of a or, or in other words we can say that if log of a minus log of b is equal to log of a over b here in the place of a is 2 and in place of b is 1 the log of b minus log of a here gives us the value of log of 2 over 1 that is equal to log of 2 next thing is find the area of the region bounded by the line x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 4 and the function is y e raised to power x we have to find actually this integral term now we use again use the fundamental theorem of the calculus and e raised to power f of x derivative of this function is equal to e raised to power f of x divided by the derivative of the function in the exponent here the function in the exponent is x it means its integration is e raised to power x itself and the limits from 1 to 4 when we put the limit we get the values e raised to power 4 minus a hopefully this video helps you to understand the concept of definite integral definite integrals the main difference is that uh, the boundaries uh, a and b in the def in the case of the definite integral but in the case of indefinite integral there will be no boundary a and b though no specific values and we are not going to use the constant c for in the case of the definite integrals remember these terms stay in touch Allah peace